melodia Art of Self in Rabbi Sekra One of the learning tools in this workshop is to learn how to eliminate intra group dependent transactions. It is when the subsidiary declares or pay dividend to the parent that we need to eliminate those transactions. It is not when the parent pays dividends because when the parent pays dividends those dividends go to outsiders, outside the economic entity. We don't need to eliminate those dividends. But when the subsidiary pay dividend we must eliminate them as intergroup transactions. One of the differences here when we compare with the intergroup transactions relating to service, services, inventory and non-current asset is they are buy and sell transactions. The dividend transactions are based on ownership. Therefore, here the percentage of ownership matters. In the previous types of transactions, the percentage of ownership was disregarded and they were eliminated in full. But here, the dividends are paid based on the percentage of ownership and the basis of elimination or reversal of transaction is based on the percentage of ownership. There are two types of dividends. One is called the interim dividend which is paid, declared and paid during the year. In the same year it is declared and paid. And the final dividend, the dividend that is declared at end of the year are generally is being paid in the following year. So there are two types of dividends. And here's an example. 1st of July 2012, parent acquired 70% shares of subsidiary for 40 million at $2 per issued share. So the dividends are paid based on the number of shares set. On 1st of October 2013, subsidiary declared 20 cents per share, that is 4 million worth of interim dividend, and it was paid in cash on 1st of December, on the same day. But towards the end of the year, 29 June 2014, subsidiary entity declared 40 cents per share, 8 million worth of dividend, which is the final dividend from its post acquisition equity for the profits. So if you look at the subsidiary entries are uh, credit cash and debit interim dividend for credit dividend payable and debit final dividend 8. For the parent, parent owns 70% of subsidiaries equity. For the interim dividend, it gets 70% of 4 receive cash, debit cash and credit dividend revenue. For the dividend declared of 8, parent will receive only 70% of pay, that is 5.6, credit dividend revenue, debit dividend receivable 5.6. What we need to eliminate here is what the parent has received. The other dividend, that is 30% of dividends, are declared and paid to non-controlling interest shareholders. 
although they are part of the group, they don't, they are not part of the intergroup transactions. So therefore, that portion is disregarded for the moment that we take into account when we determine the non-controlling interest. But for this discussion here, for the intergroup dividends, what we take is the dividend that the parent will receive and have received. So we will eliminate by reversing the transactions and for the interim dividend we will debit dividend revenue 2.8 and credit interim dividend 2.8 that portion only for the final dividend we will debit dividend revenue of 5.6 and credit final dividend 5.6 but this is a general general into summary when we combine the two what we have is interim dividend and dividend revenue debit and credit but here what I have done is I've highlighted the dividend portion of the parent and I have faded the dividend portion of the non-controlling interest so that when we eliminate for the consolidation entry we eliminate only that highlighted portion so our elimination entry is debit dividend revenue for the interim dividends and credit interim dividend for the final dividend we debit dividend revenue 5.6 and credit final dividend 5.6 and there's payable and receivable we debit the payable 5.6 and credit receivable 5.6 Thank you.